Greetings. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to work with some common vector data file formats in QGIS and add them to the map. And what I've prepared here is a folder full of some data from Philadelphia. Um, I've got a file geodatabase, uh, a CSV file, I've got a shape file that's zipped up right now, and KML. And so we're going to work on uh, adding these uh, four different types of files. Uh, so let's start with the shape file. Usually, when you download a shape file, it comes in a zip. Uh, format like this. Not always, uh, but uh, a lot of times it's uh, zipped together. The reason why is that inside uh, there's a bunch of files that work together. So a way of transferring multiple files together on the internet is zip them up and send them. Uh, to open this, um, you right click and say extract all in Windows. And I'm just going to dump it right into this folder. So you can see all these files that were extracted and one of them has this .shp uh, extension. So this is the one we're going to browse to in QGIS. Now if we want to rename this shapefile, we need to rename all of the ones that are in there. If we want to email it, we have to send all of them. If we want to delete it, we need to delete all of them. So that's something to remember with shapefiles. So uh, you're familiar with this Open Data Source Manager button from QGIS. Uh, we're going to choose Vector Data here and click the dot, dot, dot and we're going to choose the one with the .shp extension, the shape. Um, so if we click open and add, um, that's now added to the map. Uh, these are some evacuation routes in uh, Philadelphia. Um, so now let's add the data from the Esri file geodatabase. Um, so that, if you recall, uh, was inside of here. Uh, if I look in Windows Explorer, and if you break this thing open, uh, you're not going to be able to interpret it. There's a lot of like black box weird files in here that are not intended to be worked with in this way. So you have to have some software that understands the file geodatabase format. Um, and you can't just go browse to a particular data set uh, directly. Um, so what you have to do in QGIS is change the source type from file over to directory. And then set the drop down to Open file, G, open file GDB. You can then go browse to it. Notice how this is now the only thing that shows up. Uh, select the entire folder. So you're, you're treating the, the database as a folder here. And there is only one data set in here. Uh, so it's going to add that one data set. Uh, I have some points uh, that represent uh, some demolition events that occurred. Okay, so I've got those in my map now. Um, now let's deal with the CSV file. So CSV stands for comma separated values. If I were to open this just in a text editor like Notepad, uh, this is what I would see. Now this looks pretty scary just to begin with, but uh, there's actually a method to the madness. This is a very structured and organized file that's very useful as well. In the top row I have the header of my spreadsheet. Um, so these are the names of the different columns. Notice that there's a name X and Y, so this will hold the longitude and latitude respectively of each point. And then each row here represents a new point in the data set. Um, and if we look carefully, we can see coordinates like this that are geographic coordinates uh, for each feature. Um, now if we were to open this in something like Microsoft Excel, it would be able to sort those out uh, each comma separates the column, and each row separates a row. Uh, so it was able to read that file and display it in a spreadsheet. And what would be really useful is if we could have a, a map program like QGIS could read this uh, longitude and latitude and actually plot these points on the map. And so that's exactly what it will do. Now to open a CSV like this in QGIS, you actually use the button that looks like a huge comma. So you choose the limited text. We're going to browse to those uh, flu shot clinics in the CSV. And there's one thing we need to do, which is to choose the coordinate reference system for this file. Now, if the coordinates are in latitude and longitude coordinates that were derived from a modern GPS uh, or taken from a, uh, any kind of modern GPS device, I guess, uh, they're going to be in this WGS84 coordinate system. Uh, that's a pretty good guess. Uh, for latitude and longitude. And if you need to, you can search for that here, WGS84, and find it in the list. Um, and then just check down here and make sure it read your data correctly. 
For point coordinates, you're going to have to tell it which field holds the longitude and which field holds the latitude. Make sure to not get those mixed up. In our case, the fields were called x and y, and, and here you, you, you give the x field for uh, longitude and y field for latitude, so it's pretty intuitive. Uh, but there might be some data sets where that's called other things like lawn or lat or easting or northing, so you need to be able to hook it up that way. Um, and then there, you may need to tell it uh, which column has the header, but it looks like it read the header correctly. So if I click Add, I should see those points on here. Um, let me turn off the demolitions. So now you can just focus on the flu shot clinics. And we've added those to the map. Um, the final file type here that I'm going to talk about is KML. Uh, this is a common uh, spatial data format that was created by Google, uh, or popularized by Google, I should say. Um, and is now shared as an open specification for those who want to make KML files. A lot of different kinds of software can make this. Um, if I open this with Notepad, you will see that it's uh, very structured as well uh, with a system of these. Uh, these are called tags. Uh, this is in a format called XML, or Extensible Markup Language. Uh, and there's a structure of these tags. So here we have a point tag, and inside of that is a coordinate tag that has our uh, longitude and latitude and then uh, when we have the slash here that means we're ending the tag so we end the coordinates tag and we end the point tag and then we can have lots of other attributes that go with that data and so um, this is uh, looking a little messy here in notepad but if we look at it we start seeing the same things over and over and again we realize that this file has structure a well understood structure uh, that can be read easily by a computer program uh, it can also be read by Google Earth, so you can see the little Google Earth icon as Google Earth has picked up on this format. If I were to double click this file, Google Earth would launch and uh, would zoom me in here to this data set. So it's going to take me to Philadelphia where I can see these uh, HIV treatment centers. And you know I can even do things like click and see some of the attributes that are in that KML file. Okay, But QGIS also can use uh, KML. So the way that you add it is under the vector data, and uh, we're going to set this back to file here, and we're going to browse to this KML. And click Add. We now see those uh, clinics on the map, or those treatment centers. And we can change the symbols if we wanted, turn things on and off, uh, reorder the layers, etc. Um, so this has just been kind of an introduction to some of the most common file formats. Uh, hopefully it's helpful, especially if you go download some data off the internet. It's probably going to be in one of those four formats, or you'll be able to have that as an option. And now you know how to add it to a GIS.